Hello everyone. Welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanan and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and hydrology of late. So in this video in hydrology we are going to discuss about the nature, scope, application, definitions and several other things and so please watch it till the end and learn all these concepts. Now if you have not already subscribed our channel please do subscribe and for the earlier videos you can go to our playlist section and check for yourselves. So now let's learn. So in this video, we are going to learn about the definition, nature, scope and application of hydrology. So let's start with definitions first. So if you look into this particular slide here, the hydrology is the scientific study of Earth's water, simply Earth's water in all forms, if you observe, encompassing occurrences, movement and distribution. Three things. Occurrence is the first thing, movement is the second thing and distribution is important of all the Earth's water across the planet. That is what hydrology is all about right then further if you observe here it examines the chemical and biological properties of water so it's about biochemistry as well and also interactions this is very important principle of ecology and which applies to hydrology with the environment including its impact on living organisms and then further the scope of hydrology covers the entire life cycle of water on earth so what three things is important here in definition hydrology is scientific study of earth's water in all occurrences movements and distribution then we have the physical and chemical properties and interactions and it is very important to look into the entire life cycle now looking into the world pattern what is important here for us to look into that what is this interaction or interrelation here so hydrology is very interestingly a interdisciplinary paper which has linkages with geology fluid mechanics then you have chemistry and physics, then you have engineering hydrology and of course climatology. So that's why we say it's an interdisciplinary paper which has strong interconnectedness with other sciences. So if you want to be good in hydrology, you need to be also a little good in all these things and understanding of all these things. That would only be important if you are actually specializing in hydrology. But for basic know-how, this much is good enough. Now if you observe what is important, for instance, the first thing that you will see here, that understanding the phenomena, what phenomena? Precipitation, evaporation, evapotranspiration, climatology and meteorology is important. Then what you observe is infiltration process, which are studied in soil science, while groundwater flow is analyzed in geology. Then if you observe, what is here? Fluid mechanics. So what do you study here? Remember fluid movement of various kinds where surface runoff is involved from geomorphology, stream flow and several other things that we talk about then what you observe that additionally comprehending transport of substances in water right and that's where physics and chemistry is involved and finally engineering hydrology focuses on specific aspects of hydrology where planning operation of engineering projects and you observe so many things are happening right from hydropower creations and several other things now Hydrology branches out into distinct areas of study, as you can see here. And what you observe, the subdivisions focus on different aspects of water. So if you observe carefully, hydrology is having this surface water thing, groundwater thing and marine, as you can observe. And let's observe here that within hydrology, what are these specialized domains? So the first specialized domain is hydrometrology. So which studies interactions between water and atmosphere. The second is surface hydrology that focuses on river, lake, streams, right? So that's surface hydrology for us. Then what is the third one? Hydrogeology. Now what is hydrogeology? Remember the geology interdisciplinary. So underground water and sources like aquifers and aquifuge. And then we talk about drainage basin management and water quality, which is very important part of our planning and policy making, right? So let's observe that oceanography and meteorology, why aren't they considered parts of hydrology? So hydrology is primarily focusing upon water at all levels. But if you look into oceanography, it encompasses the study of oceans and marine life only, right? And meteorology focuses on atmospheric processes only. So that's why they are independent disciplines. But hydrology focuses on all sorts of water. So it's a 
assimilatory subject in that way you can observe and then further let's look into hydrological research and the work of hydrologists so this is life of a hydrologist what does they do right what kind of research so observe here hydrologists do environmental engineering policy making urban planning and all sorts of things so by understanding this water movement hydrologists develop strategies that's the whole point here so strategies for development for planning for flood control for drought mitigation and several other things related to water quality and what you observe this research forms the basis for this particular planning right for designing infrastructure projects for implementing water conservation measures right and of course looking into the ecosystems which are getting disturbed now what are the various branches of hydrology so if you look here there are certain branches which are listed here you can take a reading here chemical hydrology of course does the chemical aspects of hydrology and water eco hydrology is related to the living component here plants and animals and their hydrological cycle relationship hydrogeology is related to underground water hydroinformatics is when you apply information means information technology and applications here then you have hydrometeorology which is talking about water body surfaces in lower atmosphere interaction then isotope it's related to the isotopic signatures of water and its utility right surface hydrology of course is talking about the rivers and you know lakes and everything that we talk about drainage basin is essentially looking into how much is the catchment area forms of reservoirs flood protection and so many things and water quality is talking about pollutants and all those solutes that exist in water then look into the scope of hydrology i'm sure after learning the nature and definition here you already know the scope so where is the scope here the first thing that you'll observe here that hydrology plays a crucial role very important role in management here right so water management predicting floods droughts addressing environmental challenges right so let's explain in a little more detail so first scope is in monsoon prediction and agriculture in india specifically if you observe because monsoon monsoons are erratic every year we have a lot of things involved related to planning and policy and obviously our food security so here is the first scope hydrologists study historic rainfall data atmospheric patterns oceanic conditions and look into the predictions of onset duration and intensity of monsoon every year and then we look into imd our apex body so imd indian meteorological department uses this hydrological models and helps our farmers right the second scope is in river basin management here so if you look into the river basins here ganga brahmaputra godavari and several others where millions of people are using the waters of the river for irrigation drinking water industrial use their hydrology has a role to play so if you look into this ganga river basin where hydrologists monitor water flow sediment transport and several others and also look into the reduction of risk of floods then here is the implementation of ganga action plan and namami gange which is obviously in news so you can look into it and what is the next scope groundwater assessment and management so what about groundwater assessment and management why is it important because you have seen several places in india groundwater levels are going down it's depleting right especially for farmers in punjab if you observe a lot of problems are happening because of soil salinization groundwater water depleting and irrigation facilities are not enough to actually sustain agriculture so hydrologists use different techniques for mapping modeling aquifer mapping and all those things and helps us in better planning of course and then is flood management and early warning systems where there is a scope so you know that we are country of river and thereby we are country of floods as well every year so hydrology plays a crucial role in flood management as well looking into the early warning systems and flood plain mapping and remember in kerala floods what happened in 2018 devastating floods so hydrologists had a role to play where they collaborated with the government agencies to improve flood forecasting models and several preparedness measures and what you observe is the next scope which is one of the most important scope what is hydropower development because this is one of the areas which india has to take into consideration looking into the usage of fossil fuel if you have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions we also need alternative sources of energy and that's why himalayan region western ghats and several others have this huge water potential where hydrology plays a key role so hydrologists work with environmental engineers and several others to look into this so flow pattern sediment transport environment mental impacts all these are being studied and for instance sardar sarovar dam narmada river you know this is a very famous area so where all these ecosystem and things are being studied now urban water supply if you look into the bengaluru condition right now already rapid urbanization and obviously there is a problem of water supply so here again hydrologists have a role to play so urban planners who have hydrological information and if they have hydrologists in the team would manage it better 
especially this you know storm water runoff and several others so in bengaluru where rapid urban growth has strained water resources hydrologists are involved in the projects where in water harvesting is important recycling of water and several other things that we talk about now the last thing is approaches and applications so what are the different approaches the first approach in hydrological study is experimental approach the word itself tells us it is based on experiments in labs or the field settings right so here experiments can involve measuring infiltration rates right studying sediment transport so several things in experiment help us in better understanding of these hydrological processes and thereby validating theoretical models then there is observational approach so you take observations right in using instruments like stream gauge groundwater monitoring wells remote sensing data and several others and then we derive this input output modeling we do then what we have is modeling approach as it is connected so you know it's a simple you know equations which are used in hydrological process for complex numerical simulations so simulation is that by what time the water of the flood is going to reach here here so this kind of simulations have been done so it is like a prediction modeling that we talk about which is very famous and simulation of groundwater flows forecasting models droughts assessment of impact of land use changes climate variability all these things are being done in modeling approach and then is statistical approach which is also as important where you see regression analysis time series analysis spatial interpolation all these things being used and remember this has a very important role in looking into the risk assessment right and on which a decision making can be done and gis and remote sensing approach is the most modern approach that you look into is based on satellite technology satellite data and putting into a gis environment and looking into spatial patterns visualizing it analyzing it and then finally looking into the changes that is happening on the ground and we have interdisciplinary approach which is connecting with people from various backgrounds so you have meteorology geology ecology engineering social economic sciences coming together and solving the challenges so So these are the major approaches apart from this what are the applications so applications are related to our scope so water resource management is the first application then you have flood prediction and management as second application then you have drought assessment as third application then hydropower generation as fourth application then fifth is urban water management right now under concern and of course chennai remember they have done this entire water harvesting system mandatory in tamil nadu and on government buildings then look into agriculture water management it is also as important where in areas drip irrigation in punjab has been launched and then further you see environmental protection as another important arena where you see yamuna pollution ganga pollution and biodiversity you know aquatic biodiversity in delhi protection area as well then you see climate change adaptation of course this is the broader framework where you have to be developing climate resilient water management strategies in coastal areas and vulnerable areas right like kerala and others so these are very important ones so this was a basic introduction for hydrology related to nature definition scope applications approaches in the next video we meet for more so all the best wishes to all the learners and if you have not liked already please do press a like and subscribe our channel